in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please allow me to just pray with you for a moment. So God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Today, I want to talk about you and I being the temple of God and how the temple of God gets involved in prayer. On one occasion, Jesus said, and this is during Holy Week, actually, on one occasion, Jesus made this statement. It is written, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Wow, what an indictment upon the people, making the house of prayer a den of robbers. It's important that we understand that when Jesus used it is written, he's quoting from at least two Old Testament prophets. Jesus knew what he was talking about. In Isaiah 56 and 7, the prophet said, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And in Jeremiah 7 and 11, the prophet says, But you are making it a den of thieves. And Jesus went on to prophesy that Jerusalem would be destroyed and that destruction would involve the desiccation of the temple of God. And in fact, Jesus said these words in Mark 13 and 2, not one stone here will be left upon another. Everyone will be thrown down. And it's amazing that Christ's prophecy of the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple came to pass in about 70 AD. And so when the temple was destroyed, that physical place where people gathered to worship, God needed another place to dwell. And that's where you and I become involved. In fact, when Paul was preaching in Athens, he made this declaration, and I quote from Acts 17 and 24, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. Let me just clarify that. God will visit temples and church buildings and mosques when I say God carrying Christians visit those places of worship. You see, God does not live in those places, but when you and I come, because God lives within us and God dwells within us, we bring God and we worship God in that man-made temple, that mosque, that church building. In fact, we can worship God anywhere. Now, as God's temple, the Bible, I'll explain this in a moment, as God's temple, God dwells in us. It, it's a mystery, but it's an awesome mystery to know that God, the Almighty, will take up residence in the life of His chosen. In fact, Paul asked the question of the Corinthians. He said, don't you know, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives within you? Paul asks the question of the Corinthians as if it's the first time they've ever acknowledged or realized the fact that as a born-again Christian, I am a temple in which the Spirit of God will live and move. And he asks another question, does Paul, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? So it's interesting, isn't it, that, that you and I today are the dwelling places of God. Now listen, if, if we are the temple of God, 
then one of the expectations of us as Christians is that this temple, this house, must be a house of prayer. If God's temple is not a house of prayer, then we should almost be arrested for robbery because the Bible reminds us that we are His temple. And so we rob ourselves of possibilities. If we're not praying, we rob ourselves of potential. We rob ourselves of blessings. We rob ourselves of so much if we, weren't, if we aren't into prayer. And so this temple, George Rowe, as a temple of God, must be a person of prayer. There are some negatives. If I am not a person of prayer, number one, I don't expect revival. And in this day, we talk so much about revival. The psalmist asks the question, wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in you? And Habakkuk asked the pointed question, or made the statement, O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Their thought, their prayer, is that God would grant revival. And the classic of all classics is 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, where the Bible says of Israel, the nation, and of the church today, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so as God's temple, as a man or a woman of prayer, if we are not praying, you really can't expect revival. Number two, we open ourselves to a whole bunch of temptations if we're not talking to God in prayer. In fact, Jesus on one occasion made this statement. He said, uh, pray that you will not fall into temptation. Pray that you will not fall into temptation. And then we read in the word, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. Temptations will still come, but when we pray and talk with God, these temptations are bearable. We come against them and we become more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Number three, if we don't pray, then we aren't communicating. I can't imagine, like my wife and I just celebrated our 52nd wedding anniversary. And I can't imagine my wife and I living in the same house and not talking with each other, not communicating with each other. Life would be rather boring. And so because we are the temple of God, filled with the Spirit of God, to communicate with God, we pray. The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. Isn't that awesome? And the psalmist said, you hear, O Lord, the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. We communicate with God. We verbalize the deep feelings of our heart and our spirit through prayer. In Psalm 22, in my distress, I called unto the Lord. I called out to my God. And from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. It's a beautiful thing, communication. And to communicate with God the Father through the Holy Spirit living within us gives us a sense of excitement and joy within our spirit. 
The other thing about prayer is if we don't pray, we rob ourselves of all kinds of healing and possibilities of healing. O oh Lord, the Bible says, have mercy on me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. Heal me. We read in James that if we're sick, we call the elders of the church and we come together and we pray and the faith of those who are praying and the person that we are prayed, praying for will be healed because we have communicated our deep feelings to God. On one occasion, my wife was diagnosed with a brain bleeder. That was many years ago. And the doctors informed me that she will not get from point A to point B. They did not expect my wife to survive. But we prayed. And while we were praying, my wife said, I am healed. The doctors didn't practically laugh at her, but simply said, the flight to the hospital in St. John's is available, you must go. When she arrived at the hospital, with a whole bunch of specialists and did all kinds of tests. They said to her, there is no blood clotting. There is no damage done to the brain. Today we call it an aneurysm. And she literally walked out of that hospital because we believed in the possibilities and the power of healing through prayer. Amen. And the other thing as Christians, if, if we're not talking with God, if we're not praying with God, now I'm not suggesting that you be on your knees 24 hours a day. We can pray while we work. We can pray while we do dishes. We can pray at everyday activities. It is to be constantly in the mode of prayer. And if we're not praying and believing and hoping and reaching out to God, there are possibilities that we will miss out on. Mark says, Therefore I tell you, Jesus is speaking, Therefore I tell you, whether you ask or whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Wow, the possibilities. And because we are the temple of God and because God lives within us, it's exciting that when we communicate with him, there are possibilities. And last, if we're not praying as the temple of God, we rob ourselves of strength and vim and vigor and vitality. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Ladies and gentlemen, as temples of the Holy Spirit, we pray, we seek God's face, we come before Him on a daily basis, and the possibilities and the potential is almost overwhelming. I want to encourage you today that Christ will be Lord of your life, I want to encourage you to trust Him to daily walk under the auspices and the influence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you again for taking the time to listen and God's blessing. Until next time, take care. Amen.